Oh, the fire of London uh, was completely devastating. I mean, it destroyed a third of the buildings, about 80 churches, all the guild halls, the great warehouses stuffed with stuff down by the Thames. And so after the fire, it was seen as a great opportunity for rebuilding. The mammoth reconstruction of the capital was an overwhelming task for London's craftsmen. And for a young apprentice across the North Sea, the fire was not to be a tragedy, but a glorious opportunity. As the embers were still warm on the destroyed city of London, a teenage Grinling Gibbons was busy learning his craft in Amsterdam. Gibbons had English parents, but he was brought up in the Netherlands. His father, a draper, had traveled here to make his fortune. This was a smart move. In the 17th century, the Dutch people were enjoying a golden age in terms of commerce and also art. Gibbons was schooled by the most famous sculptors of the day, the Quellin family, headed by Artus Quellin. They created the classical statues that decorated Amsterdam Town Hall, declaring the power and confidence of Holland's new merchant class. Amsterdam Town Hall was a very impressive uh, secular building which was for the citizens of Amsterdam, so a middle class but a very grand middle class building. The exterior was impressive, but it was the carvings the Quellins created inside the building that were to shape Gibbon's creative imagination. It was very luxuriously decorated with all sorts of figurative and non-figurative carvings in marble. And the Quellins were the major artists in the city at that time. was a very uh, important part of Gibbons' training and um, there is no question he couldn't have become what he became without that background in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. Down-to-earth Dutch merchants liked their art to appear as realistic as the goods they traded in. And their tastes were catered to by carvers far more skilled than any to be found in Britain. Here you can see, in marble, objects that Gibbons was to spend the rest of his career transforming into wood. Musical instruments, seashells and creatures from the sea, cherubs so lifelike they look as if they might breathe. But Gibbons was schooled in far more than just carving because the Dutch were also obsessed with botany. This was a golden age of Dutch still life painters and their naturalistic rendering of flowers. And Gibbon's wood carvings were always imbued with this passion for flowers in their many varieties. But most importantly for the young Gibbons, there was a great woodwork tradition in Northern Europe that hadn't yet reached Britain. While we painted our wooden sculptures, raw wood was seen as vulgar. In Northern Europe, artists reveled in the natural textures of the medium. And like them, Gibbons was never to paint his work. 